Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosson of Steve Brosson's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. And a tight illustrative hand in watercolor, thin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Here it is. Once again, it is Monday, May the 11th, and this is Clyde J.K.L., and you are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 45, and I'm here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the podcast, the Artist Friends Podcast. And the recommended videos for our listeners, if you want to follow along what we're talking about, just visit talkartpodcast.com. That's www.talkartpodcast.com. And you can see our recommended videos, our recommended uh, audio podcasts that uh, we uh, use to inspire and uh, motivate our discussion. This week, it's been a long time, Our one of our favorite artist teachers on the internet is Stefan Bauman, and none of us have ever uh, enrolled with him. Of course, his course is rather expensive, but he does put out excellent content for free, free of cost, and his advice in how to create perfect art and how to market and how to uh, motivate artists and the recommended uh there was a recommended video that he had done uh, earlier in the year was uh how to paint the elements i think we'll start out with that uh, he talks about uh, using the, in your paintings to paint wind and paint uh, movement which is really kind of hard you know to do and uh, diane you you got any thoughts on that well, I have experience with that. <laughs> I'm working in wind and working in the elements and you know snow and rain and stuff. Um, yeah, it is a challenge, but I mean, if if you're trying to paint something that's not there, it's a little harder probably. Um, but when you're out there, that that's one of the reasons I like plein air painting is because you feel all that and you're in in that environment and it's all coming onto your canvas. It shows up like. You know, you, you, the, you're dealing with wind and weather and all the craziness that happens out there. So it does, it does make a difference being out in it. Yeah. Well, he even, he even mentioned, uh, cause this, this, uh, recording was, I guess was done in January. And, uh, at that time they were covered with snow 
you know, and he said when he uh, recommended to his students uh, to paint the elements, he says, freezing outside. I'm not going outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard. I mean, I've been out in the cold weather painting and your hands freeze and you like have to keep rubbing them together and stuff trying to warm them up because your fingers are free freezing and it is kind of crazy. But um, in fact, a lot. And then you have, issues, you have issues with your paint sometimes getting too cold, you know, freezing on you. Wow. But, yeah, he, well, he did suggest, uh -huh. uh, he said, you can use photographs, but the, his, from his personal experience, his best paintings, his favorite paintings, and the paintings that sell the most are the ones that he's actually done in the elements, you know, out there. Because that, what you mentioned, that, that, that wind and the breeze and the rain, and it, it, it comes into your painting. It's, it, you know, makes it. Yeah, or the heat. <laughs> Heat's the same, just as bad. <laughs> Whenever I paint in the summertime, yeah. when it's like the hundred, yeah, I usually try to find a shady spot yeah. to be. Uh, <laughs> in uh, the Gulf, when it's like a hundred degrees outside, and you, there's no breeze, the wind is blowing at zero, and you're out there, and the humidity is like ninety-five. And as soon as you walk outside, your hair just goes <laughs> like you stick your hand in an electric socket, you know, <laughs> and so. Uh, by the time you go to the little mailbox and come back, you're just soaking wet because it's so hot and humid. That's what it was like on the Gulf. But yeah. Okay. Yeah, I deal with the time have to deal there. with that where I live too because I'm right by the bay and between the bay and the ocean, and it's you know a lot of water around here, so it's very humid in the summertime. Enjoyed his talk, you know, and and his emphasis was, uh, and then yeah, you know, he a suggestions of how do you paint wind. You know, how, and you know he uh, gave some suggestions concerning. Of course, he he has this this video was where he's giving a lecture to one of his class classes, and they uh, you know he reviews some of their paintings and he put up some of the paintings and examples, and you know he offered advice on the he said uh, you know using a palette knife uh, a palette knife you you uh, uh, for like sky and, and whatnot, you don't want to put the paint on real thick. And he emphasized that uh, when the, and then he said, if you use a palette knife to put to thicken the thicken, the maneuver of thick paint, you want it to be mostly in the foreground. And his, his logic for that <coughs> was that the thickness of the paint, it actually cast shadows onto the painting. And I never thought about that. You know, as, as as you know, maybe that doesn't come up in photographs, but it comes up when you stand in front of it. Yeah, but with a palette knife, you usually get harder edges on on a lot of things, and so the uh -huh. stuff that's closer to you usually has harder edges than the stuff that's further away. I mean, that, this is a generalization, but in general, so you don't want a lot of detail showing up in the stuff that's in the background, like the sky. Uh, you know, it draws too much attention if, if it is, unless you want that to happen. But you know, normally you don't want the attention drawn to the background. You want it drawn more to something that's in the so, front. So your painting has a bit of a depth. You know, it has a depth. So you, yeah. you know, the viewer is like looking into and, and it can actually see the distance. Because, you know, you create that with your mm -hmm. color and perspective. But uh, just the thickness of the paint can give that, you know, that impression. I, I never realized that, you know, I went back and looked at some mm -hmm. of my other painting. I said, okay, that's why that looks that way. And I stumbled upon that completely by accident. Probably I, I didn't intentionally do that. <laughs> now, <laughs> now I know how to do it intentionally, you know, with oil. I think oil paints is really good for that because it, uh, to me, that medium does the best job at being thick or thin or, being able to build up layers and stuff that stick out. Okay. So, yeah, that's what I was talking about. And the second video, it was uh, a kind of, you know, he's doing podcasts now, audio podcasts. And his uh, podcast was, um, what do you want to be when you grow up? I enjoyed that discussion. It was really kind of funny because it says, you know, when you, when you ask a four-year-old, or a five-year-old, what do you want to be in your group? You know, they say, I want to be a fireman or I want to be a policeman or, or, uh, a president or, you know, whatever. No hesitation. 
they know right away what they're going, what they want to be when they grow up. You know, I want to be Batman. I want to be Spider-Man. Or, you know? But when you ask somebody <laughs> our age, yeah. And you know, he's, most of his uh, listeners are, you know, he's in his sixties, you know, and, and uh, as we are, and, um, uh, you know, we come along with, well, you know, I want to provide a living for my family. No, 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 no. What do you want to be when you grow up? And his point of asking this, you know, is to get you to really think, you know, to really think about, you know, to start dreaming again. Because when with age and with life, we forget our dreams, you know. And so, uh, you know, Diane. You yeah, know, it sort of knocks the wind out of you. Yep, it sure does. <laughs> Yeah, as you're older, you want to qualify it. Like you want to explain why you're saying what you're saying, and and you know the, your reasoning behind it. <laughs> Where when you're four, you don't think about all that. You just you know blurt out whatever it is. Yeah, and he said, unfortunately, some parents they uh, you know uh, kind of stifle a child's uh, growth, you know, in art because uh, you know they're they're drawing this image. You know, what's that? Oh, that's a dinosaur. Well, what's what are you gonna draw next? I'm gonna draw a cow. Yeah, I love that example. And he said, "Well, that don't look like a cow." And then right away, it instills in the child doubt and negativity, and you know they yeah, don't. They can't do it. And that, that unfortunately, that's that's our society, and we we do that without even realizing. It. So that's why it's so precious. Or our little ones, when you encounter, uh, you know, children that are starting to draw, whatever, just love everything they do, and you'd be amazed, at, you know, if you know how uh, it will inspire them to continue working on art and everything. Well, I, think, I think too, it's true of any um, profession that the parents don't necessarily think is a good one. <laughs> like, I mean, like you know, other other arts or. Um, you know, they might want them to be a doctor or something, and they, they want to be a teacher. You know, it's like, so they kind of keep putting negative thoughts in their head about that particular thing, try to get them, steer them towards, you know, what they want them to be. And that's really horrible <laughs> that, you know, for people Literally, to do that. With a lot kind of kills their dreams. Is. And Gary Vanacek also talks about that. Yeah, it does. Yeah, he talks about that. He, he, says he feels so blessed that he yeah. had parents that, you know, encouraged him and taught him so much that, you know, uh, but, uh, he's, you know, we, we have to get rid of that negativity that was instilled in us from the time that we were little, you know, I was very fortunate that, uh, my mother and my grandparents were a hundred percent encouraging with art, uh, when we were little, I vividly remember my uh, grandfather had this big roll of that uh, uh, white butcher paper that he used to have in, you know, butcher shops. Yeah. You know? And every time we visit, visit my grandmother, we spent a lot, when we were little, we spent a lot of time, you know, with them. She would uh, cut off a big piece of that paper, lay it on the floor. And she had uh, uh, these uh, cigar boxes and shoe boxes that had all kinds of crayons and markers in it. And she would put them down on the floor he said, boys, draw me something. Oh, wow. And I and my two brothers, we would spend <laughs> hours drawing something for grandma, you know. <laughs> and then she would take and cut them out and put them on a refrigerator. Well, that's right. cool. And we would know right away when we came back the next time if they were gone, you know, if they got taken down, you know. And, and, <laughs> and my grandfather, you know, he, he was just as encouraging, you know. So I was uh, just very, I feel very blessed that from the time that I was little, you know, I was encouraged, uh, to be an artist. And I think I kind of disappointed him when I got older because I was, I carried that all the way through grade school and high school. I was always the best in the art class. I had all, all the awards and all the A's and, you know, and then when I was got out of high school, I was actually enrolled in a, uh, art course. And, uh, before I got out of high school, a correspondence art course, and I, I didn't finish it. I went into the military. They weren't completely disappointed, but I could just tell, you know, they were, they were once in a while. My, my, I remember my grandma, you know, 
uh, would say, do you draw anymore? Oh, yeah, yeah, I still draw, Grandma. I take my I take my sketchbook with me, you know, and I did when I, you know, traveled around you know, in the Navy. But And then she passed away while I was going through uh, one of my uh, military schools, uh, one, one of the technical schools. But uh, I uh, and, and my mother, you know, she would ask if I still, you know, and I took a paint kit when I went over to Italy, you know, was first stationed over there. But I didn't do uh, as much art as as when I was younger. And thank God, my daughters, because my daughters, when they were little, you know, inspired me and I did their ca cartoons. And now as adults, you know, a few years ago, I think I've told this story before, they just got on me. Said, wow, you don't draw anymore? You were so good, weren't you? So my art career now is the... Uh, is boost. I, I'm. It's like I'm reli reliving my youth. You know, <laughs> and this is the career that I was supposed to have had when I was 17, 18, or 20 years old. I'm now doing it. I'm 60. Yeah, you know, <laughs> in my 60s. And I hopefully my grandparents are smiling down from heaven. You know, on 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 my accomplishments. You know, because I'm doing it for them, and I'm doing it for my you know uh, daughters and everything. So. What I want to be when I grow up, I'm going to be an artist. That, that you know, no hesitation. I am an artist. <laughs> okay, the next video that uh, and the last one, what what caught my attention on this one was from Stephen Bauman. He did a podcast talking about artist block during this COVID nineteen uh, crisis, and. What caught my attention when I started listening? The reason why I recommended it was. The normal artist block talk of you know life gets in the way and, and and stops you and especially now that you know we're we have to all are, are expected are requested you know to stay indoors and um, and even if we're not in the uh, you know if we're not in the the what they call the the hazardous or high risk area and I, unfortunately I think all three of us are, are in a high risk group <laughs> because of our age but uh if you're young you know you request to stay in so that you don't carry the virus back to your parents and your grandparents you know and it's more of a a, a uh, unselfish you know thing but a lot of artists of course are losing their income they're losing their their way of uh you know, participate in, in gallery exhibitions and whatnot. And, uh, but he said, this is an opportunity for as artists to think about and turn inside and look at, at, at why you create art to getting back to the previous podcast of, uh, what do you want to want to be when you grow up? This is a way of, uh, spending some time, to don't worry about the money. Don't worry about creating, you know, the, the art to sell, create the art that, uh, that you like and that feeds your soul. And we've had discussion before that, about that before. Diane, you want to, want to add any, any of your comments? Yeah, I think, um, all artists kind of go through that where they're trying to paint to, to the market and, um, you know, in hopes of making an income so that they can be an artist when they grow up. <laughs> but it, ne most of the time it doesn't work, at least not for very long, because you can't force yourself to paint stuff that's um, not really coming from your soul for very long. Um, you can do it if you have to. Like, you can make yourself do it, but it's not going to um, really show in the work like it'll it'll show in the work that it's not from your soul that right. it's not what you really love to paint yeah. it'll look completely different than the stuff that you really care about that you really are passionate about and um it won't be your best work it, it, no it won't be your best work at all yeah constance you want to you want to add something to that <laughs> yeah nice. um yeah y'all are right <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> No, I think we keep losing her. Oh, I forgot what I was gonna say <laughs> about feeding about feeding your soul. You know, uh, uh, doing your uh, doing the artwork that uh, that you like, and not necessarily what the what the market uh, requires. 
I think you're kind of, you've been kind of going through that constantly with your jewelry, right? Yeah. I was, yeah. The jewelry, jewelry is not selling for me at all. So I really haven't made a piece, you know, to sell. Um, but, you know, hopefully the jewelry end of it will pick up. I think this is just put people at buying more things for the house instead of for themselves because they're not going anywhere to show it off. So, you know, they'll do other things with the money instead of buying jewelry. You know, jewelry is kind of a last, you know, last, it's not a, it's a luxury item, you know, so yep. that dictates a lot. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's what impressed me about his talk. It, it got me to thinking about, you know, uh, instead of trying to think about creating something that might sell or that because I have my art on several different platforms where they can put it on apparel and tote bags and whatnot, I got myself, if I wasn't careful, I got myself into a, a thinking of, uh, well, that would look good on a tote bag. Okay. So let me create that. And then afterwards, not feeling satisfaction, you know, and I've got to get back to uh, painting exactly what I like, exactly what uh, brings me joy. Like, you know, I, I uh, did a small painting in an eight by 10 this, this Saturday for my daughter uh, for Mother's Day, because my oldest daughter, this is her first Mother's Day. You know, and uh, so that uh, it brought me a lot of joy. And I saw the difference. It had been a couple of weeks since I'd really created any art. And it really, it uh, it came out and it showed showed in the painting. And then when I po posted it on Facebook, you know, I had a lot of compliments, you know, and everything. And, of course, my daughter loves it and wants to make sure that I ship it to her someday. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's why I decided to do an 8 by 10 and be easy to ship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can get it over, get it over. but uh, I, those were some very good points that uh, he made. And, and Diane, you uh, you just uh, re uh, reemphasized, you know, what he was talking about. Yeah. Well, I think too, a lot of artists right now we feel things deeply, and I think uh, this whole virus thing has has affected a lot of artists and kind of stopped them in their tracks, and you know. It's, it's just a really difficult time for everybody, and you just have to kind of, I don't know, you just have to work your way through it and, and try to find the light at the other end of the tunnel kind of thing and keep working and try not mm -hmm. to dwell on all the stuff that's going on that's so negative. Yeah. That's why I'm glad we meet every Monday. Yeah. We do. We meet every Monday, and, and we meet not just yes. for these podcasts because we were meeting for the longest time, what, for – almost two years without doing any recording. And then this last year, you know, we came up with the idea, well, let's, let's record some of our talks. And we were meeting for an hour or so, you know, just, you know, talking about art and, and talking about our, what's going on in our life and, and laughing and joking and, you know, and, and just being art buddies, art friends. And uh, sure. We all have other artist friends and other friends, but I think uh, we have more of a purpose uh, the three of us of uh, keeping each other motivated. So me personally, I want to thank you two for joining me every week. Really <laughs> keeping me going. Yeah. Keep me from going nuts and keep me from uh, sitting and just watching videos and Columbo series <laughs> all the time. <laughs> well, I think, I think in this time, day and age right now with all the, everybody's going through where a lot of people are getting stuck in that. Like they're, you know, they're, they're not work, doing any uh -huh. work. They're just <laughs> vegging in front of the TV, and that's not a good thing to be doing. <laughs> you know, you really need to be active and uh -huh. try to you know, accomplish something and make your life have yeah. some value <laughs> instead of just wasting it on watching TV yeah. all the time. Absolutely. I think that's going to – that's a good way to end this episode, episode – 45 of the artist friends podcast for may the 11th and i've been here with diane and constance my two best artist friends thank you two for joining me and i'll say bye bye diane and bye bye constance you're welcome Clyde. good night yeah good night good night diane <laughs> and constance bye bye folks
The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constant Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronzan at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C-B-R-O-S-N-A-N-S. Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com. If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. That's cjkale at sign mystery-otr.com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license. Thank you for listening.